we've just been looking at how to use trigonometry in order to calculate the distance to a star if you can use this parallax method. In other words, if uh, six months later you actually see um, the star sort of appear to move. Now one thing I want to talk about is why do we use six months later? That's just because we want to have the biggest distance possible between sort of when our eyes are open. It's like the equivalent of when you're sort of using this trick with your thumb like this, or the distance between your eyes. The maximum distance between your eyes, you know, the bigger you make that, the better you can tell um, angles. And so we basically make it the farthest we possibly can. I mean, you can do it from one end of the earth to the other, but that won't really work very well. Whereas if you take it sort of six months later, you basically guarantee that you've done the biggest distance you can, at least uh, in order to do this. Now we then define these angles here. This was D was the distance and P was the parallax angle. And we defined it in really weird units. We said the distance was not in meters or in light years, it was in parsecs. And the angle was not in degrees. Now why in the hell do we do it this way? Um, so in other words, why are these weird units there? Maybe I'll say that. So why weird units? Or why the weird units, I guess I should say. Um, well, actually, they're kind of handy here. So first of all, um, angle P is super small. I'll say that. So angle P is super small. How small? Well, if you take one degree and you split it, because it's actually way smaller than one degree. I mean, if you imagine, you go all the way around in a circle, you split that up into 360 equal slices, that's one degree. So you take your one degree, which seems really small, but it turns out parallax angles for stars are way smaller than that. So you split it into uh, 60 slices. And actually those are called arc minutes. But even those are too small. So you split um, an arc minute. So each minute of arc, you split it into 60 more even slices. That's called an arc second. So one arc second. I should write it properly here, not one arse, haha. Uh -huh. No, it's one arc second equals one three thousand six hundredths, because that's 60 times 60, of a degree. That's crazy small. So if you take one degree in a circle and split it up into 3,600 even little slices, that's just one arc second. So that's an extremely small unit of measure. And of course then, what we do is, we define then the parallax angle, in other words, one parsec. Okay, that's, that's what we call it, we call it a parsec. What it means, that represents the parallax angle, oops, sorry, I should say it represents the distance, okay, this is a distance here. If it's, we're measuring a distance of, for example, one parsec, it's written as one PC, we say one parsec. It represents the distance um, that is equal to a parallax angle of one arc second. So if you look at this then, a distance of a parallax angle of one arc second. Look at this, parsec. That's where they got it from. So parallax angle of one arc second. So parsec. That's where the sort of parsec came from. So what this tells you then is that if you have a distance away of one parsec, that means your parallax angle here is one arc second. In other words, it's one three thousand six hundredth of a degree. So it's a very, very, very small unit of measure. Okay, that's really important to know. So that's one parsec. Now we have a few interesting little sort of notes or things to sort of keep in mind. Um, well, we can have that one parsec actually has a, it actually is related to a light year. It turns out it's 3.26 light years. So that's kind of nice to know. 
Um, another thing we might want to know, um, well, first of all, the Parsec is kind of a neat unit in that, um, well, it's not very commonly used in everyday speech, but astronomers often use Parsecs for distances. In fact, if you look up uh, in almost any sort of astronomy journal, things like that, if they talk about distances, it's either in sort of light years and mega light years or something like that, or it'll be in parsecs or kiloparsecs. So for example, a galaxy will have its distances written in, in sort of units of kilo or mega parsec. So this is actually a handy unit when you're looking at parallax angles. Now what's kind of neat though is, um, I don't know if you've ever seen the movie Star Wars, but um, there's actually something kind of neat about it where they actually mention this parsec thing. Uh, they mention a little bit sort of falsely. I'm going to show you that in the next video. But uh, before we get to that little sort of uh, funny thing, I just want to talk about a few of the limitations of uh, parallax. So I'm able to do that. So uh, parallax method. So it works well for close stars. What do I mean by close stars? I mean stars that are up to a few hundred parsec. Okay, so up to a few hundred parsecs, then this works. Now why doesn't it work for anything uh, farther than that? So if any farther, I mean in theory it could work for anything, but if it was any farther, uh, the parallax angle is so small, we just can't detect it. So it's too small to detect. And of course, as we get better and better uh, detectors, then maybe we can actually sort of push this forward and maybe get a few extra hundred parsecs or something like that. But the problem is that if we go back to this original picture here, this field of view of stars like this, it only works if something is close. If a star is really far away, even six months later, it won't appear to move at all. And that's just because it's so far away. So this method is awesome for close things, but it sort of it has a limitation. Okay? It doesn't really work that that well. I mean, we'd need better telescopes in order to sort of do that, and that's because it doesn't. Uh, maybe I'll say the star doesn't move enough. You know, so that's what happens. Sort of the star doesn't appear to move enough. Maybe that's a good thing to say here. So it doesn't appear to move enough to detect. Now, of course, in theory, you could use parallax method for every star, but it's just a matter of, well, this is so insanely small, we can't even see it. I mean, we're already really having trouble with these measurements. We have to be very, very accurate just to see these. But if we do get these measurements, then we can tell the distance with fairly high accuracy. So that's why this is actually, I would argue, it's, it's the best method just because it's the most reliable and it doesn't require much other guessing. It's sort of, it's geometric, right? You just use geometry. You use trigonometry, in fact. You use triangles here. You use this trick here that says the distance is roughly 1 over p. And so that's why this right here works really nicely. But again, it's defined in parsecs and in arc seconds. And again, one parsec represents a distance that's equal to a parallax angle of one arc second.